All right, this is the front differential on my truck. It's a three-quarter ton 01 Ram, and you see it kind of knocking. It's like really loose, and you can see that it's been leaking. It's wet everywhere. So um, what this is, is inside of here is the pinion, as in not like rack and pinion, but as in ring and pinion, you know, like a ring gear like this right here this is the ring gear you can see the bolts on one side I call it a ring gear because when you unbolt it it just looks like a ring but uh, the teeth are good and everything else is good but this bearings toast and it keeps eating seals and when I go to use it when I'm going up to go uh, do a rescue in the snow or whatever it just makes it so that this smells really bad you can tell it's getting hot so uh, tear it down and put a new one in First thing you do, I'm going to just go through it real quick. I've already done most of it, but this will be helpful. It's good, it's good stuff to know. When you go to do this, you pull the wheel off first, pull the tire off, and then once you pull that off, you've got two 16-millimeter uh, 12-point bolts. And what I mean by that is, see, like there's your 16, is they just got a head like this. So you just use the 12 point socket and it'll work great. So you pull off the calipers. Make sure to hang these because these cannot hang by the brake hose. You know on a little Subaru or BMW or even some of the Buicks with the aluminum calipers you can get away with it. This you've got to hang them. They're beastly heavy. Once you pull the two bolts out of the steering knuckle right here and right here for the caliper you can expand it by putting a pry bar between the brake pad on the little ear of it and compress the caliper a little bit you can see right there on that little ear part of it so you open it up pull it off get rid of your brake rotor if it's stuck hit it on the face on each side with a sledgehammer between the lug nuts see like here is your wheel hub bearing assembly um, you want to hit right here and right here on your brake rotor and just go smack 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 back and forth it'll come off well and then the next thing you want to do is you want to pull the nut out of here uh, the nut is a one and three quarter inch it's one and three quarters so you want to get the cotter pin out and take it out and then you've got these four bolts that go around now with these these are all a 14 millimeter 12 point so you want to loosen them out and then tighten them back in about two or three turns you see the little kiss mark right here um, that kiss mark is from the you know this being on the bolt with the socket on and then I had my lovely assistant turn the wheel to the left and it actually works like a hydraulic press to press that wheel bearing out that wheel hub assembly they get rusted in here to where they're nearly impossible to get out. Um, so you do that on this side and then you do it on the top side, back and forth until you've got it out. And uh, if you use cheap, crappy, made in China stuff like this, you can expect it to break like this. So I'm phasing out all my old China crap. But anyway, you get the hub assembly out of there, and then the next thing you do is you pull out your axle assembly with your wheel joint and everything. Now you'll notice this is a passenger side and it's short. Um, the reason why we're pulling these out is you can't pull the carrier assembly that the ring gear is on. You can't pull that out to get to the pinion to get it out unless you pull the axles out of it. And they just slide out. They're just floating in there. And you see that this axle in there it's an intermediate axle. The intermediate axle is mated together with the ring that this is on. And you see the ring's got a notch in it. That notch corresponds with this fork. So you gotta pull this uh, little assembly out. It's just an 11 millimeter. There's four nuts or four bolts. Super easy. Just pull it straight back out. And once you do that, then you grab inside of here, grab the axle and push it to the right. Push it to the outside toward the passenger side. And then this one, it's all the same as the other side and you just pull it straight out and it'll look something like this. It's a little skinny one with fine splines and that one's a big fat one right there with big fat splines so that that ring can get onto it easy. Of course, 
coarse splines are easier to get the thing on. So once you've got those pulled out of each side, then you put a pry bar in on this side, up underneath behind here, and you pry the carrier out, and then you pull it out, push it in, pull it out, push it in, until you can get it to come out. Be careful, it's heavy, and set it aside. Now this one doesn't have any, but a lot of them you'll have these little spacers on one side or the other side, or both, that space it so that it meshes properly. Make sure to keep those in the proper order when you're doing this. Um, the next thing that you got to do once you've got this out and you've got the races and everything set in place the way that they're supposed to be is you go back here and get an 8 millimeter or a 5 16 socket and pull out your little use uh, u-joint straps. There's one here and one here, four total bolts. <coughs> and then once that's out, there's a nut. You pull the nut and then uh, you can pull out the rest of that uh, pinion from inside the uh, differential case. So it'll be good. And then we'll pull out that seal that you see here. So I'll go ahead and get to where we've got this pulled back. This will collapse a little bit. It's telescoping. And I'll probably tie it up um, to the shifter shaft for the automatic right here. I'll get it tied up out of the way and I'll show you how to pull that seal out. All right, now you are sideways and you're looking at the differential. You can see my bullet bike through there. <laughs> so here is a seal puller. It's got a big long handle on it. Let's see if I can give you an idea what it looks like. I was informed by somebody that I did not have one <laughs> because of the way I do my rear main seals. I don't like to use one of these. But you just put it in there like you're going to climb the mountain. And then you can take a hammer on the back end of the handle and just tap at it. Not the best tool in the world, but it gets the job done. I don't know if you can see it's kind of pulling out a little there. Mutilates the crap out of your seal. But like I said, sometimes they work. not easy holding the light and doing all this. I wonder if there's something I could do to get that to stay. What about sticking it in there? There we go. Doing something's one thing. Lighting something is a whole other thing. Lighting it and doing it and filming it all at the same time. It takes some real determination. So anyway, there's our bearing. The middle part of it looks like it's pretty shot. So now I need to go in from the other side with a big long. What I have is I've got a T post that's been flared out at the top because it got it had to be hit real hard to get it into the ground. After pulling it off, those are great. You cut them off, and uh, after you cut them off, you weld a chisel onto the end of them. And then you can reach in and really do some cool stuff with them. So I'm going to grab that and knock that through, see if I can break my camera. chisel, put it on the inside here. Work a little on one side, work a little on the other side. Bart'll do. Give. 
And we're out. So, that's how you get all that riffraff out of there. Now, as for the pinion, it has a bearing here that is toast. That's way wobbly, look at that. That thing is shot. So I've got a little tool that you tighten down from both ends, there's a wedge in there. And then you put it in the press and press that off. And then also this crushed sleeve, it needs to be uh, addressed in the same way. Or you can take a torch and just cut them. <laughs> I like to do things cold most of the time, that way you don't risk melting or burning too far. So here's where the yoke is for the U-joint. Here's my crushed sleeve. Here's the bearing. And if you look from under here, there's the pinion. I'm spacing it out with these uh, spacer characters so that I don't crush that little ring at the uh, oil shield. And you just... Uh, Start cranking away, and as you do, let's see if I can get this to hold still. Just presses it right on through. I'm hoping I can get that crush sleeve to hang up on it, get them at the same time. Kind of like that, I guess. But you can see this, it's just a couple of bolts, and you got to straddle this this way <coughs> so that the load is borne across this and not on the bolts. If you try to bear the load on the bolts, you'll find yourself in a heap of trouble. That's what my dad used to say. I'm still filming. You didn't see it, but that hammer was actually up in there. I used it as an extension so I didn't have to crank that thing as far. And uh, sure enough, crushed sleeves slid right off. So now I just need to get the other one and put it on. Being mindful to put this plate on first. Put that on there. And then I'll press my new one on. Are you impressed? <laughs> Make new friends, but keep the old one is silver and the other gold. I keep the old bearings that I have because you never know when you're going to stack them all together to press a bearing down on. It's like I need to stack one more. So you can see from the front of the diff, I've got the new races put in. And I also did a whole lot of cleaning. Up inside of here, that little channel was full of metal. Uh, see all the metal in the pan that all came out of that I had to fish it out with a magnet and I blew it out with brake parts cleaner and compressed air to make sure things didn't stick and float in there so that's what I've got I'm gonna put a magnet I'm gonna stick a rare earth magnet in the bottom there I think maybe not but anyway uh, it was a good idea to check because there was a lot of crap in there this is what it looks like with the axles in it. See how the axle from this side, the intermediate one sticks into here and it's held in by the um, outer axle. And then this one, same story. You can see it down through there. Bam, there it is. It doesn't stick in as far as the other one when you have the hub assembly all bolted in. But that's how it be. Another thing I didn't mention earlier is I take off the a uh, tie rod on the driver's side and that enables you to have this down and out of the way which makes it a lot easier to get that carrier in and out and it also makes it so that you can some people leave it in you know you can have it hit I don't know if you can even get it out but you know at least it wouldn't drop out as quickly as it can so it's a little detail